Okay, okay, check it out. Everyone loves the hate Tesla. We are back with another one. The rise and the fall of Elon. What a question mark. This is part two. Now we went over part one. Part one was exciting. If you didn't see it, go check it out. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell and do all that good stuff. But let's get active. Let's get it in this video. Again, fair use. Johnny Harrison, great video. I will put the description and the link to the full video in the description. So here we go. We're going to lead off. We're going to go into speaking about Twitter. This is going to be a long one, but net net, here we go. Here we go. Oh, man, let's get it. To throw himself into. And so he chose the storm of all storms. <laughs> Big deal, big man deal. Here we go, Twitter. People are going to start getting crazy now. Free speech. At the end of 2022, he buys Twitter for $44 billion. In his offer letter, he tells us why he's doing it. He believes that Twitter has the potential to be the platform for free speech around the globe, and that free speech is a societal imperative for a functioning democracy. Also, another reason is he's going to take Twitter, now known as X, and make it a financial platform, something he wanted to do with PayPal, but he, he wasn't able to do it. And also, let's read this because <clears throat> a lot of times we just move past it and then we kind of like read one thing. So it said, I invested in Twitter as I believe in its potential to be the platform for free speech around the globe. And I believe free speech is a social imperative for functioning democracy. <clears throat> However, since making my investment, I now realize the company will neither thrive nor survive this social imperative in its current form. Twitter needs to be transformed as a private company. Okay, so this is a note where we're taking the company from being a public to a private company. And I think that's very good and it's interesting. As a result, I am offering to buy 100% of Twitter at $54.20 per share in cash. A. 54% premium over the day before I begin investing in Twitter and a 38% premium over the day before my investment was publicly announced. My offer is my best and final offer. And if it is not accepted, I would need to reconsider my position as a shareholder. So Elon Musk was already a shareholder of the company formerly known as Twitter. And when he made this offer, he was making an offer to buy it outright. Twitter has extraordinary potential. I will unlock it. Good pitch. Let's continue. And right away, Musk applies his playbook to the company. So if you guys didn't actually see this playbook in the last video, let me just kind of go over what it was. Uh, let's go back a little bit. Ah, hold on. And right away, Musk... All right, so this is Musk's playbook, and this is in the first part of the video. He talked about he's in the weeds, so he's in the decision-making about the details. So he's on the assembly line in the manufacturing facility. He's with engineers. He's with the design studio making designs and changes to the cars or whatever the actual product is. Number two, questions everything down to the rooter to the tutor. He questions everything, right? Leave nothing up to experts or rookies or beginners. Leave nothing up to assumption, but question everything. Number three, constant urgency. He puts urgency on everybody to perform. Perform in quicker timelines than they initially provide. Number four, this is number four, motivates talented people. The most talented people. So not normies wanting to just get by, have a work-life balance, and sip on wine while they're at work. Not you guys, okay? You guys can go to the old Twitter or form your own company. But to the people who really want to make a change in the world, and they're ready to make a sacrifice and dedicate money, energy, attention, and time towards this goal, those people, okay? Ready to go above and beyond. Number five, which is debatable, he's a total a-hole. That's debatable, depending on the person. I have bosses that are just like Elon, a little bit more rough and tough, but I never called them an a-hole. They are who they are, and you just deal with them on their terms, and they're really actually good people. Let's continue. Musk applies his playbook to the company, sending out a midnight email telling the thousands of employees that there's going to be a new Twitter culture that is, quote, extremely hardcore, long hours, full imperative for a functioning now, he told, out a midnight. He told people, he sent them an email. I think I could zoom in on this so you guys can see it. 
Ah, don't want me to zoom in on it. All right, here we go. Going forward to build a breakthrough Twitter and succeed in increasing in a competitive world, but we will need to be extremely hardcore. This will mean working long hours at high intensity. Only exceptional performance will con constitute a passing grade. Twitter will also be much more engineering driven. Design and product management will still be very important and report to me, but those writing great code will constitute the majority of our team and have the greatest sway. At its heart, Twitter is a software and services company. So I think this makes sense. If you are sure that you want to be a part of the new Twitter, please click yes on the link below the form. Anyone who has not done so by 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow, Thursday, will receive three months of severance pay. Whatever decision you make, thank you for your efforts to make Twitter successful. See, pretty diplomatic, not a whole ish, right? Night email telling the thousands of employees that there's going to be a new Twitter culture that is, quote, extremely hardcore, long hours, high intensity, and tells anyone who wants to stay to fill out this form or be fired. Thousands of Twitter employees are being laid off. Locked out of their work email accounts, Twitter has fired half of its seven and a half thousand staff. We called it the Twitter Hunger Games. Fill out. Fill out this form, but make a decision. And if you make a decision, receive severance pay, and you're no longer with the company because we're going in a different direction. So he gave people options. He gave people options to leave or stay. I thought a lot about how to talk about Musk's foray into Twitter because it is in the news right now. It is shaping the way that we receive and talk about information. And there's a lot of hot takes out there. What I decided to do here is to try to give the most earnest understanding as to Musk's motives. Why did he do this? What does he want from it? And what is he doing to reshape Twitter around this vision? What was it ultimately that led you to make the decision to do it? Uh, somewhat melodramatic, but I was worried about. Now, my perspective would be how he did it, not why. Because that's very speculative. That, that it was having a corrosive effect on civilization. So first and foremost, free speech is like the thing he says over and over. Free speech? Well, see, this is the funny part. And he's going to attempt to prove why it's not or stuff like that. But that's not true. You said you're going to try to figure out why he did it. So the only way to know that is to get into his mind <laughs> and, and, you know, extract the information of why he did it. Or just listen to what, what he says. And if he says it, then that's why he did it. But then you're going to speculate like, well, no, you're not really doing it because what I perceive or my perception of what you're doing in your actions is not being supportive of free speech. Well, that's you, but that's no different. It's irrelevant. He still did it for free speech. That's why he did it. Well, I don't think you did. Well, that's what you think. But again, you said you're just trying to figure out why he did it. Free speech. free speech is the only way that humans are going to thrive. And because Musk's main mission is the advancement of human civilization, he must buy Twitter and make it the free speech platform. The platform where we have perhaps the most important conversations in the world. He says this over and over, like in this tweet where he says, this is a battle for the future of civilization. If free speech is lost, even in America, tyranny is all that lies ahead. So that's number one on what he says his motives are. I think part of it is that it's where it's where it was located, which is uh, you know downtown San Francisco. The next pillar of Musk's reasoning has to do with the city of San Francisco. Is there a place that's more far left than San Francisco Berkeley? Twitter's headquarters is located right here in downtown San Francisco. And for Musk, that's a big problem. It was an accidental far left information weapon that was then harnessed by the far left, who could not themselves create the weapon, but happened to be co-located where the technologists were. OK, so let me get this straight. Musk believes that Twitter being in the heart of a liberal city means that the engineers and leaders deciding what gets elevated and suppressed on Twitter are infected with the politics of the liberal city. And so they're more likely to elevate their ideology, a megaphone, an information weapon. That's his argument. I have a couple issues with the argument and its logical underpinning. But again, this is about what Elon Musk says and as his motivations for buying Twitter. And number three. Yeah. OK, so it's good that he didn't go into it, but he kind of had this undertone like, I don't agree with it. Which, I mean, that's not crazy to say, right? Like, if 
and liberals would say the same thing if you launched an application based from a conservative state or a conservative city. It's more probable that it's compassed with conservatives. That's not a conspiracy. The majority are conservatives and therefore have conservative ideas and therefore promote conservative things, companies, businesses, products, and services, right? So that's not too crazy <laughs> to make that type of assumption. Doesn't mean it's 100% accurate, but it is a hypothesis. The government is censoring Twitter and Twitter is letting them. Twitter was simply um, an arm of the government. You know, it's a state publication is the way to think of old Twitter. It's a state publication. All right, this is our list. We're going to get to each of these and like try to understand them all. But like, is anyone else wondering what happened here? It feels like the story went from quirky visionary engineer uses his brilliant, unorthodox, socially immature tactics and obsessions to accomplish unprecedented engineering feats to said quirky engineer suddenly dedicates his brilliant mind away from physics and towards social media because he believes that there's a deep state conspiracy between San Francisco technologists infected with liberal bias and they're censoring government overlords. And, and he is going to fix it. Yeah. Again, guys, don't do this, all right? Uh, just because somebody's the engineer doesn't mean that's all they'll ever be and all they ever do. Like, you see what I'm saying? So this is, I think, people suffer from making a particular leader or a hero they see as one person, and that's it. For me, of course, I bought into X or I bought into Twitter or SpaceX and Tesla based off of the merits of actually Elon being a great engineer. That's it. I was like, wow, you know, a lot of people talk about climate change, but he's actually doing things about climate change and also not just doing things and preaching to people, but actually making a product that's better, more effective and more efficient. And the company is actually really interesting. It has a lot of great things going on for itself. It innovates it brings jobs back to America. The first time we're actually creating products again, like physical products. I will talk about that in my next video. But then, then I was like, OK. And then when Elon also decided to take over Twitter and turn it into X and do the social networking, I said, okay, he's a human. He does that. I'm like, humans do that. So you saying, oh my gosh, I can't believe an engineer that creates products went to start doing things because it might be a conspiracy by the government or et cetera, et cetera. And I don't think it's a conspiracy. He actually had the Twitter files. So that's not a conspiracy. You know what I'm saying? Like you got the files prove that the government agencies are working with the thing but that's not crazy in itself governments do that all the time so net net at the end of the day he just showed something and he gave proof and two he can do anything he wants because he's a human kanye west made a song about love okay cool kanye west decided to go be in fashion okay cool like you you see what i'm saying i mean you these are the people who told kanye be quiet, only do music. You could never do fashion because you're a rapper. Like, bro, I could do whatever I want. You don't tell me what to do with my life. Like the nerve of people. Oh, you got the nerve to do that. And it's quite funny because he became more successful in what? Fashion. He became highly successful. The thing that made him a billionaire wasn't his music anymore. It was his fashion. His fashion, Yeezy, took him to the next level. Not his music, his albums, the graduation, and all this other stuff. So a person can do whatever they want. Period. And also, Elon said it before, he didn't create products. He created Zip2 and PayPal, which weren't physical products. What happened? I actually never got to the bottom of that. And um, I don't think anyone has. That's actually been a central question that was never answered for me during this reporting. We do know that it is. He's a human. He can do other things. What? Why is that so hard? <laughs> I think it's most like most normies do one job for their whole life and then pass off on the earth. So when somebody else does a bunch of fantastic things in all different types of endeavors, they're like, what? But how does that not make sense? Zip2? Is Zip2 the same as SpaceX? Is PayPal the same as SpaceX? Tesla? Compared to SpaceX, they're the same. It's the exact same thing. What? <laughs> Boring company, Neuralink, all those are the same type of industries. Man, this guy needs, these people need some help for real, for real. And the engineer. So next time I see an engineer on a 
social networking platform or decides to start a YouTube, I'm going to say, engineer, what are you doing? You're an engineer. Why are you starting your own YouTube? This is media. Get out of here. You know this pivot happened sometime in 2020. Why did Musk shift to obsessing over this? The answer to that probably lies somewhere in Elon Musk's brain. And it is not ethical or useful for me to try to opine on his mental health or what is going on in his brain. So let's stick to the facts. Here is the logical framework that Elon Musk used to buy Twitter. This is what he wants to do with it, is fix this. Let's see what happens next. He does a good job saying he's not going to peer into it and still doing like an off slighted comment, which kind of leans towards it. But net net. It's not that bad. It, it, it's still, come on, stop, stop throwing pebbles and hiding your hands. But okay, he's not throwing stones and hiding his hands, but he is throwing pebbles. I'm not going to dig in his thing, but you know, kind of that was an answer. To, why would he? Eh, I don't know, guy, but. So after firing most of the employees and changing the name to his favorite letter, he gets to work on free speech. He lets big accounts that were previously banned back onto the platform, including former President Donald Trump, comedian Kathy Griffin, lawmaker Marjorie Taylor Greene, Jordan Peterson. Within a few months, he posts this tweet around the Super Bowl, and he notices that this tweet gets less engagement than the tweet by President Joe Biden. Elon does not like this. He calls an urgent meeting and tasks 80 engineers to quickly rebuild a version of the algorithm that will allow his tweets to be artificially boosted by a factor of a thousand. I was kind of skeptical on how sensational it was reported, but through my conversations confirmed that this actually went down. Like the old Twitter was not built to artificially boost one account. And Elon, the free speech guy was like, I need you to boost my account because it's not getting as much attention as the president. And the 80 engineers did. So a few months after buying the company, Elon now has super- I would love to see proof of that. You know, like you can't just say it happened because some engineer said it happened. Uh, that's not beyond a reason of doubt. That's a big allegation. Not saying it didn't happen, but <clears throat> you're going to have to show me proof. Algorithmic power. And he uses it to. Because I think he had a big following before, but maybe I'm wrong on that. To start to amplify certain people. So I know what you're thinking. Johnny, you just disagree with these people. And so you think that it's bad that Elon let them on. But really, free speech is about letting everyone talk. Yes, absolutely. That is true. And yet, Elon uses an artificially amplified voice to prop up a very specific type of voice on Twitter to amplify ideas, extreme ideas, harmful ideas, not just to liberals in San Francisco, but ideas that we as humanity recognize are bad ideas. And now someone with a massive megaphone has control on how big those ideas can get. Even Bill Maher, the Elon fanboy. There's a very few people who actually make change happen. You are one of those people. Even he could not understand why Elon was doing this. I understand why you wanted to like have a platform where you have free yeah. speech, but like why then embrace the worst people on it? And then Elon isn't totally consistent about this. Like in the case of Alex Jones, who spreads horrendous conspiracies and misinformation to a lot of people. When asked why Elon didn't let him go back onto Twitter, he said no, saying that he had no mercy for anyone who would use the death of children for gain, politics, or fame. He did Well, that was kind of different because, you know, definitely Alex Jones, whether you think it's right or not, he got sued for that Sandy Hook stuff. <laughs> like, what was it, 10 billion? So <laughs> that's a whole different thing. I'm not saying it was wrong or right, whether him being sued for that, but obviously that was something that even the nation decided that it wasn't right but again I, I, it is what it is i don't know the particulars he did eventually reinstate alex jones after running a poll but you start to see that he'll re okay so he ran the poll and he let him back on so what are we talking about he, he's wrong he has a position and then he leaves it up to the people on the platform and they say bring him back so he says okay but that's still wrong okay state anyone unless he personally takes issue with their views or what they said what's puzzling and that's a lie because he put people back on that he didn't want to so that's a lie <laughs> like you just you just made us say he only puts people on when he wants to and he takes them off okay but why is alex jones back he just said he didn't want him on but he did a poll and people said put him on so he put him on what then you still put that on him like he don't let nobody on unless you agree with him that's a lie puzzling to me is that this isn't free speech absolutism it's not say anything you want musk's new twitter then starts banning and suppressing substack links substack the place where independent journalists write musk made the change where you can't comment or like on anything that has a substack article and you can't embed tweets in your substack article that doesn't feel like free speech to me musk then decides that the word cisgender is a slur on twitter and threatens to ban people who use it too much is that free speech he then starts banning journalists who criticize him 
though he did reinstate a few of them after a vote. And then see, so he makes a vote and he reinstates them. I don't see what the problem is. Everybody has this type of human flaw, right? But a dictator and the evil person will never allow it to be voted on and will stand on it like the previous Twitter. But, you know, he can't have that human error. And then still, his habit is to have it and do it and then say, okay, I'm going to leave it up to people to decide. And then people decide and then he does what the people say, regardless of what he wants to do. So long as he corrects the behavior, I, I see that. Okay, average person or any person will have those same mistakes. Also want to point to something, not a post saying that prior to him having a platform, you know, he had more followers or, or excuse me, likes because, of the, you know, than President Biden and all this nonsense. But anyways, with the count, 110.6 million at press time. So before he bought it, Musk is the third most followed person on Twitter behind Barack Obama and behind Justin Bieber. So at the end of the day, it's still good. Excuse me for the phone ring. Let's continue, man. All right, we're right back with the video. Excuse that phone ring. Man, people always trying to call me when I'm out here busy getting to work. Let's go back. Then starts suing media watchdog organizations like the Center for Countering Digital Hate, trying to silence them for criticizing the new Twitter. Musk, of course, lost with the verdict coming out saying that this lawsuit was basically about trying to silence criticism and deter others from criticizing his company. He's someone who is willing to use his enormous wealth and power to silence people. Like this is such clear anti-free speech behavior. When Twitter... No, listen, listen, guy. It's not anti-free speech behavior, period long as he corrects it and anybody done that but does any other platform put it up to the people to vote no youtube demonetized people when it decided to demonetize people in the story you know instagram decides to close your account they close your account they don't go to the viewers they don't go to the audience and say hey public decide if this person should be good or leave they don't do that they never do that so net and at the end of the day, people are being silenced all over the place. You're emphasizing Elon Musk because he has human error and he goes in and that's wrong. But when he corrects it by doing a vote and allowing people to make the decision at the end of the day, I, I say it's been corrected. Do I still say the behavior before was right? No. But do I act like it doesn't exist and he's a big tyrant? No. He actually shows democracy by allowing the people to vote for it. That's actually democracy, guys. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, how could you still be saying that you're against free speech, though you block somebody for a second, and then that's wrong, that's against free speech, but then put it to the vote, everybody says yes, you still don't want them on the platform, and you allow them back on the platform because people voted for them to come back. It's not anti-free speech, bro. Twitter users organized a protest against making users pay for a blue check mark. He banned that account. And this is what's so mind bending. Like, I swear he's trolling us here. He says that he's obsessed with free speech, but then immediately after taking it over Twitter, he demonstrates an extreme hypocrisy for that very point. And I secretly think he's doing that so that we are talking about it right now. I don't think it was ever about free speech. I also think that when he posts, I don't know where you got that from. Like, you know, that's a, that's a reach and an allegation. He does it so we could talk about it. Like, what? <laughs> I'm not going to go into his mind or his mental state. I'm going to stay objective and speak to the facts. And then he says he thinks, he puts this in his content in the video, he thinks he's not doing it for free speech. He's doing it so Elon gets us talking about it. And then we talk about it. What? I thought you were going to stick to the facts, my guy. Political propaganda. See, it's so funny when people be like, I'll stick to the facts. Never listen to people who say they're going to stick to the facts. I'm going to tell you straight up, I got biases. I'm a human. I'm flawed. Okay? And so when you listen to me, know that there's going to be some biases. I'm going to make some mistakes. And that's what it is. You know, I'm a human. I'm not a computer. And even a computer, obviously, you know, it could have its biases built in. But net, net, that's what it is, guys. All right? But what these guys do is they be like, well, I'm being objective. I'm not going to put my personal opinion in. I'm going to stick to the facts. And then come next one and say what he just said. I don't think it's about freedom of speech. I think it's that he wants us to talk about it. And that's why he did it. Like, what? 
the ads, like this conspiracy video that says that Democrats are letting immigrants in to turn America into single party rule and has almost 100 million views. I think he's doing that not because he agrees with this factless piece of propaganda, but because he loves to rile people up. Though maybe he does agree with it. I don't know. Either way, he has built a platform that gives him the biggest megaphone and suppresses people that criticize him. That is not free speech. Okay, but let's move on. What did you do for free speech? Like, who made you the designator of what free speech was? And then also those same people that you say he blocked from the platform are on the platform. Hmm. Now, he blocked them for a portion of time. That's not free speech. True. That is anti-free speech. But when he put it to the vote and allowed people to bring them back, and they voted yes, and he did it, that's called reinstating free speech. Because free speech was just one of his three major motives. What about this argument that Twitter is infected with liberal ideology because it is based in San Francisco? Luckily, we have data. This was a great study, very thorough. Algorithmic amplification of politics on Twitter. It's a study from before Elon took over. They conducted a long running, massive scale randomized experiment where they looked at a huge number of tweets from seven countries. And they found that in six out of the seven countries, including the United States, that quote, the mainstream political right enjoys a higher algorithmic amplification than the mainstream political left. They saw this over and over. Oh, and also a really interesting side note here. Yeah, because most people in the world are conservative, but let's continue here is that they found that Twitter actually doesn't amplify far left or far right political groups more than moderate ones which is a myth that I believed until I read this study. But the whole point is that old Twitter did not have a liberal bias. If anything, it had a conservative bias. This study is very robust proof of that, despite Elon's theory that Twitter being in San Francisco infected it with a liberal bias. How did that survey by examining seven countries determine that Twitter had a liberal bias? No, what he was saying is everybody works in San Francisco, right, where it was based at. And the people who worked there had a liberal bias. And then working inside the company, they utilized that bias to control and ban a bunch of things, right? All traffic, no. Conservatives in Brazil, no. I don't, I don't know if people in San Francisco were banning conservatives that were vo voting for Bolsonaro. <laughs> you know, I don't think they were doing that. I don't even think they could point out where Brazil is on the map or tell you who the president was or who is now. Right. So I don't know how looking at Brazil is proof, but net net, <laughs> even he thought, and I still think that at the end of the day, that's going to have effects if it's based in a certain place with certain, you know, mod people who actually modify and control and HR departments and make determinations and decisions about the content on it. They're most likely to, you know, focus on information about USA. But seven countries, I guess USA was included in that country. I don't know. Go to the sources and read the study for yourself if you want to poke into it. Yeah, yeah that, that, that would be best. Go check out the source. If there's anything wrong with it that I'm missing, please tell me. But it seems like pretty damn solid proof to me. Okay, but what about the last critique? And this is a big one. My and I also say, what, like, if most people in the world are conservative, then there you go, right? Most people might not be liberal. Right. And so that might be a thing, especially in other countries. No, that most people are liberal in the world outside of, you know, the West. And the West is almost like six billion people outside of the West. So a lot of those people are conservative. So if they're on Twitter, yeah, they're going to have conservative views for sure. But liberals being amplified, being a small minority might be a thing. Musk believed that Twitter was being censored by governments and Twitter was letting them do this. And guess what? That is actually true. Upon taking over Twitter, Musk cracked into all of the internal communications and found a bunch of emails that showed how Twitter had banned and suppressed information that it deemed harmful and dangerous, but that they did so sometimes with a political bias. You can see things like Biden's team asking Twitter to review these tweets that they didn't like. Yes, governments around the world can ask Twitter to take things. Also too, uh, political bias and then, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it wasn't shown and people didn't know, right? So, I mean, I know this because I know how governments work across the world and also how people work, but net net, okay, a lot of people didn't know that, so this is new information in them, okay.
take things down in their country that they think are breaking the law or that are harmful to national security. And See, those are two big difference. Like political bias is different from harm to national security and breaking international law. So again, Elon's showing things that possibly weren't about being a harm to national security or breaking the law, right? But sometimes people will attempt to take political views that don't agree with them or with theirs, excuse me, and kind of label it national security or breaking the law. And this happened on both sides. The Trump White House asked Twitter to take things down as well. But this reporting did reveal what looked like a lot of left-leaning bias in censoring certain highly sensitive content. Why did it look like it? It wasn't that? Let's see. That would be damaging to the left. Like the big example of this was this New York Post article about Hunter Biden's laptop. Twitter severely censored this, not even letting people DM the link to each other and making up a thin justification for it later. Now, content moderation, deciding what is harmful and what should be censored and what shouldn't, is a really difficult task. But for a lot of people, including myself, this crossed a line. This was not okay. Though I have to say that Hunter Biden New York Post article was the most sort of egregious one. A lot of the other stuff in the Twitter files was not nearly as black and white. Much more nuanced, much more complicated. The point is there should be transparency here and I agree with Musk on that. Okay, but this is once again where we find some strange paradox that doesn't make any sense, which is that since Musk took over, government censorship on Twitter has gone up. Twitter suspended multiple journalists from... I don't think it has, but watch his points. They're not going to make sense. Let's continue. Prominent outlets, including the Washington Post, the New York Times, and CNN. Tonight, a number of high-profile journalists have been silenced. Here are the number of takedown requests that governments around the world made to Twitter in the six months before Musk took over. And these are the ones that Twitter complied with. Twitter would fully comply with the government's censorship request about half of the time. The other half of the time, they'd say no. In the six months after Musk, the number of requests went up, probably because Musk got rid of a lot of the automatic moderation. But look, Musk's Twitter now says yes to government censorship over 80% of the time, way more than the old Twitter. Wait, what? And look, the kind of stuff that Musk is allowing to be censored on the platform is really sensitive stuff for free speech. Like, take Turkey, for example. There was a Turkish election last year. The president of Turkey, himself a massive user of state censorship, pressured Twitter to block the accounts of a few people he didn't like, a Kurdish businessman. Now watch this. Watch this closely. I hope he misspoke, but let's watch it closely. Listen to what he's about to say, because the example he gave was pretty bad, but let's see. And investigative journalists, both of them vocal critics of the president. Like this is like clear black and white political censorship in an election year. Like make the guy who is criticizing me go away. And guess what? Musk's Twitter did it. They said yes. They banned the accounts and then said, we didn't have a choice. They were going to shut down all of Twitter, so we had to do it. And then they patted themselves on the back about how they were still trying to fight it. And they're doing so much for battling government censorship and transparency on the platform. We push harder for free speech. Da 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 da. Okay. But guess what? They did have a choice. This same kind of thing happened before Musk ever came in and Twitter fought back in a previous Turkish election. OK, so he's saying Twitter fought back Twitter before Elon. OK, not X, but Twitter fought back. OK, here we go. Government tried to do the same thing. Censor posts about corruption within the Turkish government. They asked Twitter to take these down and Twitter said no. They fired back that political speech is among the most important speech, especially when it concerns matters of possible corruption. So Turkey shut down Twitter. It was down for a couple of weeks while they battled it out in court and the Turkish government lost. Indeed, they lost. I'm pretty sure the conservatives lost. You see what I'm saying? So Turkey's conservative. So they, the liberal left said no. But when it came to American politics, when the liberal left asked for requests, they said yes. And when conservatives asked, they said no. But net net, he made a good point right here. So one out of how many points did he say? Four. So one, Elon messed up, allegedly. So there we go. We'll take that. One in his favor. Only one, though because they were trying to censor political speech and Twitter fought back. There's even more recent examples like Wikipedia or Wokipedia, as Elon calls it, refusing to comply with the Turkish government's censorship requests, getting completely shut down for Wikipedia. <laughs> almost three years, only to have it be overturned in Turkish courts. A major win for free speech in Turkey, which is something that's in short supply lately. So like Wikipedia, Twitter can do this. They can say no to the Turkish government. If they're actually crusaders for free speech and if they're actually against government censorship, they would have said no in 2023. So I want to see Wikipedia and Twitter, and let's call Twitter, that's before Elon Musk, have no issues then. They should have never made a, con a concession to the government. Never. Despite the Twitter files, okay? And the rest of them all of a sudden became nuanced beside the Hunter Biden laptop.
that's kind of convenient, right? Everything else was nuanced besides a hunter buying his laptop. <laughs> this ain't nuanced. Okay, look, this is the one that wasn't nuanced. Like, I just think it's more probable that, yeah, people always done this, guys. I think I'm more a little bit more reasonable with it. Like, people always have done this in media. I don't see it as nothing new. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's nothing to act surprised about. Prior to just even social networking, let's remember Fox News and CNN. You could say that, you know, CNN is more liberal, more Democrat, and then Fox is more Republican, more conservative. And when they had the old linear TV, they had their own perspectives, though they said fair and balanced and truthful, protecting free speech. <laughs> they never allowed, you know, liberals to come on the Fox News channel. And even if they did, they would set them up for a loss, right? Cut them off, discredit them, you know, shame, insult, guilt, the need to be right. They'll hit them with the sign language, shame, blame, and explain. Like they had all these techniques. It really wasn't good discourse whenever they did. But most of the time, they just didn't allow them on their platforms, period. So again, guys, you're always thinking it's social media the problem. I don't think social media is the problem. It's just humans. Humans utilize the technology and they're going to manipulate the technology towards their ideologies as much as they like to say and justify everything underneath. I'm objective. I'm not going to put my opinions in it, just like this guy did out this video. The only difference for me is saying, I'm going to be honest. I'm a human, guys. I'm biased. I attempt to be objective, but even in my objectivity, there is still biases. I'm a human, not a computer. And so net net, I'm just going to be honest with you like that versus what these guys try to do and everybody's trying to do and saying, hey, look, I'm not really, you know, I'm not really saying anything. I'm just in the middle, didn't say other things. And hey, man, you know, those guys over there in the Elon or Twitter or X, they did this and they leaned this direction. Eh, I think everybody does that. Musk's Twitter did this in India too, when the Indian government asked Twitter to censor a bunch of journalists, including an entire BBC bureau and a documentary that was critical of the government and the president, and Twitter complied. Elon, where is your conviction for free speech? Where is your hate for government censorship in moments like this where it really, really matters? But for Elon Musk, he's got a lot of other things he needs to think about. He needs to think about the market for Teslas, who might be buying his satellites or rockets. He needs to be thinking about where Tesla factories might be set up, the market for his electric cars. This is a conflict of interest that gets in the way of his idealistic vision for free speech and his hate for government censorship. How would you even know that? Like, you see what I'm saying? That's, that's just corny. <laughs> and then also, it doesn't get in his way because he's not the CEO of X. There's a whole CEO. He's not making decisions like that. So those decisions are not even his to make. So if he even knew the rules of the company, he's not the CEO. He's in charge of engineering and the product, not necessarily all these other things that you say. Well, oh, he's caught up in SpaceX. He's caught up in Tesla. He's caught up in this. And this is not allowing him to make good decisions. Again, another assumption you're making, no proof, no track record, no evidence, just like everything else you have said besides that one thing where you showed evidence of him not standing up against governments. That's one area that you did show evidence. But everything else, I'm sorry, it's just allegations. It's an allegation and a projection based off of your perspective and your perception of the situation. And it doesn't even make any sense saying he focuses too much on all these or he has to focus on all these other things, which is not allowing him to make good decisions about this you know, government regulation on X guy. He has a CEO. She makes the decisions, okay? She runs the organization from a day-to-day -day basis. Elon role is product. But I'm pretty sure you'll conspire some conspiracy theory and believe that Elon's a dictator and he'll never give up that much control and he hired her, but she ain't the real person. She a puppet. Okay, go ahead, my guy. It would publish in detail why they would take down any content they took down at the request of the government. And there's this research lab at Harvard that would aggregate all of this. So no, I don't think Elon Musk is earnest about. Okay, so he's not earnest about government censorship, but he is free speech and liberal bias. We won. These uh, three things that he said were his motive. All three, he's wrong. Okay, guy. For buying Twitter. In fact, after looking into all of this, I'm having a hard time figuring out. So you don't think that that's his motive. Who said what you think? You said you're trying to figure out why. 
end, you'll stay objective and you won't. You see what I'm saying? At the end, he says his perspective, but he said he didn't want to do that. Figuring out what Elon is earnest about at all, other than his belief that humans have the potential to do amazing things. I do believe. So now he's a complete liar all across the board. Is he even honest at all? <laughs> believe that in all of this, that is the one thing that has stayed consistent. But how he's pursuing that goal and that vision in recent years is baffling, confusing, and in my mind, quite harmful to our society. Harmful for our society. People got neural links. They're able to do things that they couldn't do. They're paraplegic, but that doesn't matter because of X. He's sending rockets, reusable, into space, reduction of the budget that we spent prior on plus contracts with the government in aerospace. That don't matter. Bringing jobs and factories and employing over thousands of people. That don't matter. None of that matters. From Zip2 to PayPal to Boring to Neuralink to SpaceX to Tesla to factories, mega factories. We're building batteries in America. We have a refining process plant being built in Texas, the largest factory in the entire planet, expanding jobs across the planet in Shanghai, opening up a new mega factory, new jobs, direct and indirect. None of that matters because of x people don't agree with you one time and this is how they become you never did anything for anybody elon because i don't like what you said about twitter twitter seems much more like a platform where he can bully the people he doesn't like he can feed his addiction to crisis and controversy while also showing a childish hypocrisy in his principles and values but unlike his other ventures which you can tell when they're successful because they're physics. The rocket either goes up into space or it doesn't. The car drives or it doesn't. This new venture doesn't have a physical feedback loop that tells him if it's doing good or working. Instead, he's playing with the delicate, precarious nature of information in the internet. Uh, it has a profit line. Like, <laughs> it's still a business, my guy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But why, man, these people are wild. You know, if it makes money, it does. It does have a metrics, man. What are you talking That's how Zip2 was. That's how PayPal was. What do you mean? It didn't create like actual physical products for the most part. They were digital products. And as long as it makes sales and gets advertisement dollars and is breaking even, which it wasn't before and now it is, right? There it goes. It's still a business. I, but, you know, again, maybe this guy doesn't look at it as a business. He thinks it's, you know, uh, you know, a humanistic thing that doesn't exist in capitalist system. Maybe you don't like the capitalist system. I don't know. Internet age. Something I don't know, though. That is already in crisis and now is being chipped away at by one rich dude who gets off on crisis. And what blows my mind most is that in the process of all of this, Musk is undermining his own dream, his own vision. This is a sentiment I heard from the employees and colleagues of Elon Musk. They felt betrayed, like this man pushed them to think differently, to do things that seemed impossible, all in the name of this grand vision of what humanity could be, what we could do as a civilization. And yet in recent years, he seems to be sabotaging that very vision, alienating the people and customers that he needs to bring this vision to life. In my mind- Alienating the customers to bring this to life. The Model Y was the best-selling car in the world in 2023, and possibly even 2024. Alienating the customers that believed in him. Tesla and SpaceX is the highest applied for a job in the world, alienating the people who want to work for him. Anything he's saying right now, he's laying it on thick, but he's laying on f allegations, uh, falsehoods that are not accurate once you look at the statistics. You can't say, I'm alienating my customers but my car is the best-selling car in the world how does that how do you do the boat how do you do that at the same time hmm hiring more people getting more applications but i'm alienating my people being i'm betraying them hmm but again when we go to the ground when we collect a survey of 
how people feel and what do they think of Elon? 70 plus percent say he's good to go. But I guess they're wrong too. They don't even know. You've spoken to some people and the sentiment amongst the small collective people that you got says this. Okay, I'm not even going to say that's false. But is that the macro? Is that a survey asking the majority of people who work for him across the board what they think? No, it's not. But okay. In my mind, Elon has exchanged that vision for controversy and division that forces all of us to talk about it. Here we are, talking about it, talking about him. No, here you are talking about him. You know, you put Elon in your mouth. I was actually talking about products and services, not about Twitter, NX. But you spoke about it, but okay. I think a part of him loves that or needs that. And yet after all of this, defenders of Elon will continue to argue that only someone like this could be the one to change the world. To anyone I've offended, I just want to say, I reinvented electric cars and I'm sending people to Mars on a rocket ship. Did you think I was also going to be a chill, normal dude? <laughs> and yeah, I get that. The people who change the world aren't normal and orthodox. They're not nice. But I don't accept this way of thinking about Musk today. Maybe a couple of years ago. But in recent... Maybe a couple of years ago. So the one thing, Twitter. <laughs> the one thing, X. Once you do that, I don't like you anymore. And it's funny. The same way that Elon talks on Twitter today was the same he did back then. He just didn't have any ownership in the platform. Recent years. Well, oh, yes, he did. He was a shareholder. Oh, um, okay. Musk has shown it's his addiction to crisis and attention that is having a corrosive effect on our society. Validating and glorifying ways of acting that rewards the worst parts of us. And instead of saving civilization, driving us further apart. Oh, might I remind you in the back right now is a rocket, Starship, the fourth launch that actually did a splashdown and landed. At the same time that this guy makes these allegations about someone not doing what they set out to do. But again, all the products and services speak to the opposite. These are the narratives that people make. People who don't make the same amount of change that Elon Musk makes speaks about the negatives, highlights the negatives, amplifies them, and then takes a step back and says, hey, everything you stand on, I don't believe none of it. Okay, well, who cares what you believe? Who cares what I believe? At the end of the day, Elon's doing it. Now, for me, Twitter and X and what you normies go back and forth on, have at it. Starship factories, jobs, directly and indirectly. The best-selling vehicle, Neuralink, Boring. These things matter to me. Not what you think about Elon, not what you don't like about government censorship, freedom of speech. Is he doing it for us or himself and for us to talk about it? Here we are talking about it. You decide to talk about it. I decided to talk about it also, but I'm not complaining about talking about it. What I'm saying is Elon's human. And I don't expect him just to make rocket ships and cars and shut up. See, I'm not a slave owner like you. I don't have that type of mentality. My mentality at the end of the day is continue to make great products, continue to do what you want to do in this world. Because you're a free man and a free human. And you're not a free human and a free man and a good guy as long as you do what I decide is good and right. What I decide free speech to be. No, 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 no. You're actually out here doing things. And I could respect that. Everyone hates Elon. And I guess they love to make themselves seem more moralistic. Nothing new about that. Guys, I know this was a long one, the rise and fall of Elon Musk, and I appreciate you being here on this channel with me. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with us. Like, share, subscribe, hit the link. Shout outs to Johnny Harrison for making that. Much respect, unlike you and unlike what you say Elon Musk is to be. I'm not going to say you're a bad human. I don't even know you. I don't even know what you think and what you feel and what your goals are. 
I'm not going to say you're a hypocrite. What I am going to say is I disagree, but hey, we'll agree to disagree. And that's why I love USA. See you guys on the next episode. Everyone loves to hate Tesla, obviously. <laughs>